I decided to make a tutorial series on the topics you would find in a more academic setting for computer science. Uh, this is mainly data structures and algorithms, so I will probably be calling this series just data structures and algorithms. So what does this series cover? Well, it covers the data structures and the algorithms. I'll get into what data structures are in a bit. But it covers the data structures and algorithms that are taught in mainline computer science degrees in universities. So my goal here is to provide a university level education on these topics um, and cover the content of what was two courses for me that I took over the span of a year. And I'm trying to provide it for free for you guys. In my university, the courses were called Computer Science 1 and 2. Some universities may put these topics under a data structures and algorithms class, and some may even put them under a completely different name. But most universities will require students to learn at least some of these topics at some point. I will be skipping the math side of computer science, such as the math behind the big O calculations and things like recurrence relations. Uh, these topics are uncommon in interviews and rarely applicable in standard application if you have an intuitive sense of uh, runtimes for various data structures and algorithms. You can also empirically determine these things by just trial and error rather than depending on doing things entirely in theory with math, and it's much easier to do it that way. Anyways, all that is to say that I, I don't think that the math side of this is particularly important, so I won't be covering it, and additionally, I don't like math to begin with, so I won't be covering that. The overwhelming majority of the stuff that I was taught in these classes is the data structures and algorithms part, which is what I'll be covering here, which involves almost no complicated math, at least. You'll be doing some basic arithmetic, probably, and that's about it. I will be covering Big O, and I will provide runtimes for everything, I just won't really go into the mathematics behind it. And I will try to give a more intuitive explanation for how it works. I should add as a warning though, you should be careful with the runtimes I provide for the various data structures and algorithms and their different operations. If you're taking a class right now and you're using my videos to study, it's very possible that your professor may disagree with the runtimes I provide. I've had professors in my university where they would disagree with the runtimes for certain operations like best or worst cases on certain data structures relative to other sources you could find online. Anyways, I'd like to give a quick explanation of what a data structure is. I personally did not even know what they were even when I had been using them for several years. I had an intuitive understanding of what they were and how to use them and everything. I just didn't really have a word to associate that concept with what I had been doing. So I think the best way to do this is to give Wikipedia's definition, which is the following. In computer science, a data structure is a data organization management and storage format that enables efficient access and modification. More precisely, a data structure is a collection of data values the relationships among them, and the functions or operations that can be applied to the data, i.e. it is an algebraic structure about data. It's essentially a way to store and manipulate data that fits some sort of use case. So it's a very, very broad definition, and it applies to a lot of things you're working on when you're programming. For many of the data structures, but not algorithms, you will learn about how you add, remove, or access data, among other operations, depending on the data structure. So a data structure is largely a collection of data that you can do things with. So why are these topics, uh, the data structures and algorithms, important? Well, they're very common to see in interviews, especially an understanding of big O is important for interviews, since interview questions and big tech companies will involve asking something about like what the runtime selling is or asking you to design something that fits some runtime requirements. So if you don't know the notation or anything, you're pretty much stuck. A lot of them are based on the actual data structures and algorithms that you would learn in this series as well. This series alone won't prepare you for interviews, but it's a good starting point to learn, well, to build a foundation that you need for interviews. And then after that, you can practice on coding problems, and there's all sorts of uh, websites online where you can practice coding problems for interviews. Learning data structures and algorithms will also teach you the thought process for programming. Uh, if you already know this, it, it's not as important. 
And there are circumstances where you might not want to learn this stuff or like there might not be a reason to learn this stuff just because you're already fairly experienced and you have an intuitive sense of the important data structures to begin with. So these topics are rarely used in normal application aside from a couple of them, which I'll go over in a moment. You might use knowledge of an obscure one once every few months and it might just usually benefit you in some way and make things a little bit easier rather than the knowledge being an absolute necessity. As I go through the different topics, I might give some examples of where I've actually seen these in use. But for most of these topics, there was no actual practical application in which I would need to know these aside from programming interviews. These topics may also be useful in programming competitions. This doesn't count for some types of competitions. In my mind, there are kind of two types of competitions. There are the ones that are more problem solving dependent which are the ones you would see at a community college level and lower. And some of the types of problems you might see are kind of the, the problems you would see in Advent of Code, for example, the ones that aren't super data structure dependent. But once you get to a higher level, um, data structure starts to become more important and it becomes more like the interview problems. And that's the type of stuff you would see at the uh, public university level and like private universities and just the international competitive programming scene. But yeah, a few of these data structures are widely used by most programmers. Actually, I should say pretty much all programmers because technically I will be covering arrays and arrays are something that pretty much everyone uses. But understanding how these work on a lower level can be useful and it can end up helping you optimize some of the code you write. Additionally, seeing existing data structures makes it easier to design your own data structures because that is something that ends up happening sometimes if you start dealing with complex problems. A lot of times you'll in normal application, you'll find that you're building your own rather than trying to research to try to find an existing one that already solves the problem you're dealing with. So why are data structures and algorithms taught in universities if they're not widely applicable in normal programming compared to actually just getting experience doing with normal problems? Something that I've found is that computer science degrees tend to focus on the science part rather than the, um, I don't know, engineering application part of uh, programming. At least in my degree, I feel like it's been preparing me on a more academic level to get into an academic perspective on ways that you would solve problems with computers rather than a practical perspective. To me, it's sort of like comparing a mathematician to say a mechanical engineer. They're both using math, but one of them is more into the theory and the other one is more into the application. So computer science degrees, or at least mine, is weighted a bit towards the theory side of things. So which of these topics that I will be covering are important and why? So this is all coming from my personal experience and the things that I've seen that are kind of useful and pop up when I'm dealing with problems. So one of the biggest ones that you're going to have to pay attention to is Big O, because if you want to get a job, there's a decent chance you're going to need to understand it. Big O is just a, a way to describe runtimes, essentially or not necessarily even runtimes because it's also spatial complexity, time or space. I'll get into that when I actually do the video on that subject, but you'll see that pop up quite a bit. Just understanding runtimes as a whole or spatial complexity and just wrapping your head around that as your programming is important. Arrays are important, obviously. It's in about everything. Stacks and queues are important. And just from the name, most people already know what those are. Uh, th those are, well, especially queues. Most people know what a queue is, just like in real life terms. And it's pretty much the same in programming or it emulates the same thing. That's important. Binary search is important. That builds into a couple other data structures and just the knowledge of binary search and the circumstances it may be applied in can help you make sense of how some lower level stuff is actually working. So I'll give an example right here. I've worked quite a bit with MongoDB, which is some database software and they have some functionality that makes use of some data structures that are derived from the concept of a binary search. And understanding that allowed me to optimize some of my code that used that database. So on top of binary search, I will be covering hashes and hash maps. Hash maps are probably one of the most important, I guess, complex data structures that pretty much everyone uses. And it's actually so important that there's syntax built into Python for handling them. Uh, here's a spoiler, they're dictionaries. 
So the last three things that are important are kind of related. So it's recursion, backtracking, and dynamic programming. These all build together to teach you the uh, programming thought process for a lot of stuff. And it's a way of solving problems. Uh, and I should add right now that recursion is not something you should be doing in most cases. It's just kind of what you're initially taught in these courses. And then when you get to dynamic programming, you find out Oh, well, you shouldn't have been doing recursion to begin with, but it's a good starting point for creating some algorithms and then you convert it. I should also add that hash maps are actually the answer to a lot of interview questions and, as mentioned before, many normal problems. So what is the format of this series going to be? Well, I'll probably start by introducing the topics first and then give an explanation of how they work with some visuals. For most topics, I will write a Python implementation of the data structure or algorithm so you can really see how it works and have a working example that you can even download and play around with. If pointers and lower level elements are critical to a concept that I'm teaching, I will also write an implementation in C where you can see what things are doing on a lower level. After I finish the series, I may go back and provide assignments that you can practice with. If I've added them, they will be in the description for the associated video. If there aren't assignments when you watch the series, I recommend at least trying to code up the subject of each video in the language of your choice and just messing around with things so you have a thorough understanding of each topic. I will provide timestamps for skipping as well, so you can skip over, say, a C implementation if you don't want to watch that, or you could skip over the initial explanation of a topic if you want to go straight to, say, like the Python section where I implement it. The most important part of the series is that you understand the data structures, the algorithms, and the thought processes used, so the programming language itself doesn't matter too much. So this is not a series where I'm like explaining a language to you, and that's not the important part of this. I should also add that not every video in this series is important to watch. Many of the videos will be extra content in case you are interested, but not particularly useful unless you're like a student at a university or something and you're trying to pass a class where you're required to study those data structures. I will leave two playlists on my channel if you want to the playlist tab. I'll also link it in the description. One goes over the important topics and the other includes every video in this series. So if you're learning for just kind of self-education purposes because you're interested, it's probably best that you go over the important topics first and then you can go back and learn the extra stuff if you want to. If you find this series helpful, please subscribe. I'd really like to hit 100,000 subscribers at some point. So who should watch this series? Well, anyone curious in the subject of data structures and algorithms should probably watch it. And then people who are trying to get a foundation to work off of for interview questions without actually taking classes, that they're paying for in the subject might also want to watch this. And also students who want an additional source to study with for equivalent classes at their college or university may find this useful. However, this series is not particularly useful for many hobbyists who like working on random small projects and hacking stuff together. And I know many of the viewers of my channel are game developers, and these topics aren't particularly useful for game developers. Some of them are, but you probably know about them already if they are important. There's one last thing I'd like to say, and that's that I will be making some assumptions regarding the knowledge of you as the viewer in this series, since this is not like an introductory course to like programming as a whole or anything. Um, I do expect you to have some previous programming experience and a basic understanding of how memory works in programming. Once again, this is not an introductory programming series. In universities, this content is normally studied by, I believe, sophomores and juniors. So normally the freshmen are learning the basics of how to program before getting to these topics. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this introductory video. The next video will be going over Big O to set a framework of looking at the different data structures and seeing how they work from an efficiency standpoint and also, I guess, spatial efficiency. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.